Today I'm speaking with Daniel Diaz, head of business development in the Dash Core team. Daniel tells me how he came to Dash, what a day in the life of a Dash business developer looks like, and where he sees the network on a long-term roadmap. Also included is a surprise and exclusive announcement regarding Charlie Shrem, Dash, and Europe. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. Um, thank you a lot for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Good. Well, I'm excited to see this most excellent piece of something. What is behind you on your wall? Where do I order right. it? Uh, yeah, so actually that's uh, a really neat uh, wooden sculpture uh, created by this artist, uh, Soran. And he's from Croatia and he basically creates uh, cryptocurrency art. So his, his name is Start the Art on the forums. And yeah, I'm sure you could connect with him, but this piece is special because he created it back in 2015 at some point. I think he did two of those and Evan has the other one. So oh, it's, really? it's really cool. Yeah. And um, so I, I actually wanted it for a long time and then he put it on offer at some point, um, you know, last year and I got it. So I'm, I'm very excited to, to have it. And, you know, I look at it every day. It keeps me going. <laughs> yeah, congratulations on that. Well, now Daniel, so when I was sending when I was sending you some of the questions that I wanted to ask you before this interview, one of the things you told me was I'm not sure you understand exactly what I do. And so I'm not sure that I do. So will you kindly share with us what it, what first of all, what do you call yourself and what is it exactly that you do? Right. So um, I am head of business development for Dash. And to answer that question, I guess we need to answer what business development really is. Yeah. Because I think uh, people kind of come up with their own interpretation of what that is. But it's actually something more specific um, within a, a, an organization. And what it is, is um, business development is the creation of long-term value for the organization, for the network. Um, based on curating and cultivating relationships and aligning product development with the market needs and penetrating new markets and identifying new market segments uh, for the network. Okay. So that is really what I do. Um, so if that's we very wanna... general. Will you give me like an example? Like there was like, will you give me an example of, of, of yeah, a sure, thing that sure. you do? Yeah. Absolutely. So um, and, uh, a simple way to, to think about it is uh, Dash is a DAO. It's an organization that can speak back uh, to the business community. And that's truly a very big advantage. So um, whenever there is a business that is engaging with the Dash team, looking to work with Dash in any way, um, I am the person on the other side of that conversation. And I am the one maintaining and building those relationships. As we integrate with a partner, let's say Bitfinex that we recently launched, um, that is not uh, an isolated event. Uh, there's a lot of preparation that comes behind and the relationship needs to be maintained as we move forward. Oh, so you were talking to Bitfinex? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. Um, only yesterday we had a meeting, for example, to follow up on things. and. When we were about to launch, I, I stayed up for about 48 hours yeah. uh, because we, need, we needed to coordinate investors all around the world to help build the order book ahead of opening the trading pairs. Oh. There's a lot of work that goes uh, into making things happen. But the thing is, I always think of the business development team as we're part of the producers of the play, right? Uh, we're doing everything behind uh, the stage and we're making sure the place goes really well. And if we do a good job, you won't notice uh, that we did anything. So that's kind of like um, what makes it a little bit harder from um, a communication and a public facing perspective, because if we're doing a good job, then um, we, we shouldn't be really noticed. Right. But it's well, like I said, to... I had I had no idea that you had been involved with the Bitfinex stuff. So, okay, well, that that is interesting to know. Yeah, not only on that, um, you know, but on 
on on everything really. Um, you know, whenever we have a press release, whenever you see a new industry partnership, like for example, our partnership with BlockPay, um, I coordinated and made that happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the new major exchange that is coming online, I took that from cold calling, completely cold, really? to agreement, to, you know, reaching, um, you know, an agreement status, a budget proposal, and now hopefully launching uh, very soon. Okay, now so, I have to ask about this cold call. When you call someone, do you say like, hello, this is Daniel Diaz, business developer at Dash. First of all, does that blow people away that, that there's a job title within a cryptocurrency network? Like, does it seem like they've ever heard that before? Well, I think that that is one of our major differentiators, right? That the um, businesses start to grow more comfortable because they can interact with Dash in the way they're used to, in the way they're used to interact with, with other businesses, right? So uh, also you need to think about the business development role, um, which is, you know, where do we fit? So basically it's not marketing, it's not PR, we're in the middle. So marketing is supposed to generate leads. That's the job of marketing. Like you guys are always generating leads for us. So I, as those leads come in, those are inbound leads. Um, you know, we manage them. So, uh, for example, you referenced in the past, let's say, a financial institution that's in, interested in Dash, and you forwarded that sort of information to us. Then I manage those relationships. And for example, one of those is is really developing into something great. I cannot. Uh, talk about but actually came from you and you do not necessarily know about it um oh well i'm looking forward <laughs> to knowing about it <laughs> right so that's uh so marketing generates leads and then then we take over and we manage those leads we build relationship which is the important thing uh we need to understand we build and maintain relationships and then when that uh, blossoms into an integration then that's ready for public consumption we uh, pass that to the PR team, and we work with our PR agency to produce an actual press release and communicate it to the mm -hmm. public. Now, but, I imagine that it's a little bit different what you do versus what, say, many other of the core team members do, because yeah. because um, you know, f writing code, for example. I mean, you know. I mean, Evolution is being developed in a private repository, but like Dash D, for example, you know, like every commit to that is public in real time. And, and, so, and so you are in like a different land where you're like, hey, I'm not writing open source code. I'm dealing with people who quite often want me to keep their secrets. That seems, how does it feel to have to like be a secret keeper in the open source world? That sounds like it, I don't think I could do it. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's very challenging, and um, you know because Dash is the only DAO in a sea of um, you know traditional businesses. So I always think of Dash as a school of fish. So basically, Dash has this governance structure that allows it to be um, you know more nimble and to make decisions and to kind of move um, in a certain direction. So we act like a school of fish, but uh, we deal with uh, traditional companies. So we have to respect uh, business etiquette. We have to respect their privacy. And, you know, we have to go through the process until we reach that, you know, public release status where we can really go public about it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I guess it's, um, you know, it's hard. I think of us, I always think about the end of, you know, the Dark Knight movie in Batman. Um, where basically, you know, they, they say that, uh, you know, Batman is just have to work from the shadows and the kind of vigilante type work that we do for Dash. Wow. Uh, you know? Shadowy <laughs> vigilante work. Daniel, I didn't know you thought of yourself as such. Wow. <laughs> well, now tell well, me... not necessarily. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's the type of work we do. It's just not public facing. Right, so, right. Tell me about nature. your background uh is are, i mean were you hustling up business deals before dash or did you find when you came to dash that this was just something that you could do uh well no not at all i have a, a lot of experience doing this kind of work so uh i am an um an engineer uh in electronics and communication technologies uh but i really took a turn for business so i have professional training in sales 
uh, negotiation and management. So, but most importantly, I'm an entrepreneur. So I uh, co-founded uh, a SaaS software company, which is a software as a service, uh, specializing in something that's called uh, CPQ, which is uh, configure price quote. And what CPQ companies do is that they provide tools for uh, pricing management, building proposals, and you know doing something that's called guided selling, which is basically configuration tools that help guide a sales representative through the process of building a quote just by answering questions, right? Okay. Um, so it's, it's something that's becoming really, really popular, um, you know, within the business community. And it's normally sold as an integration to uh, CRMs. Uh -huh. So it's sold as an add-on for things like Salesforce, mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft Dynamics, uh -huh. or Oracle CRM and things like that. So, so then how did you go uh, from being a CPQ guy to being on the Dash Core DAO? Right. So um, that's, I founded that company in 2008. And um, so I'll, I'll answer your question. Mm -hmm. But besides that, I also like founded a commercial distributor of electronic equipment in Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean. There we represent a specific American brand of equipment and we have exclusive distribution. So that business is a lot more different. It's more about supply chain management, establishing distribution channels and um, you know managing inventory, obsolescence and other things. So completely different from the virtual software business. So how do I go from those things to Dash is that uh, well, I've always been interested in technology, business, finance. Um, so I got involved with Bitcoin back in 2013, just started mining and, you know, lost money on that, but learned a lot. And, you know, I was getting more and more involved with the cryptocurrency community. The, that was my hobby. So I worked on my stuff. And then as a hobby, I did crypto. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, I discovered Dash. And um, I like to get involved on the things that I invest. So I'm not a trader. So I'm more of a long-term type investors. And I, I wanted to participate and I wanted to help my own investment grow. Uh, so, um, you know, it slowly took over. I'd say it was, there was a definitive point in time where it happened. I just started getting more and more involved with Dash. I uh, contacted with Evan. We had really good chemistry and we started working together in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, I, I started dedicating more and more time to the point where I started feeling like I couldn't really continue with my normal business responsibilities and Dash. Mm -hmm. uh, so at that point in time, I spoke with Evan and we decided that this was going to be going places and I just completely moved away from those responsibilities. I'm still a shareholder and advisor, but you know, other people took over and I went, you know, full time with, with Dash. And when and, was that? If, if I just I like to place in my mind the dates when various people well, quit their I, day jobs and joined Dash. Right. So I um I started as a volunteer mm -hmm. and around maybe March twenty fourteen and then I uh, slowly uh, took more and more um, responsibility with Dash, and maybe I completely went full time, um, you know, early 2016. Mm -hmm. So all of um, like January, you know, 2016, uh, like where I no longer had any sort of involvement in my previous. Uh, ventures, at least on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. But making those transitions take a lot of time. So I started transitioning, you know, maybe mid-2015 and slowly uh, have taken less and less responsibility on other things and more and more on Dash mm -hmm. until I completed that transition maybe mm -hmm. early 2016. Mm -hmm. Like I no longer have, I no longer do anything else other than Dash uh -huh. at this point in time. Well, that leads me perfectly to what I want to know next, which is, will you paint me a, a picture of your of your average day, like a sample day of Daniel doing Dash business development? Sure. So uh, what's, what's really um, 
interesting about the job that I do is that uh, we are interacting like in a global scale. So um, at this point in time, time zones don't mean a lot to me. Uh, but I typically get up at 6 a.m. That's when I start my day and I start working, um, you know, answering emails, connecting with people. On a typical day, I would have at least three or four um, different uh, meetings with either potential or existing partners. Are they like uh, web meetings or like call call in meetings? Uh, no, I mean, the meetings depend on on the nature of the relationship. So, for example, let's take yesterday. So late at night, I was meeting with a potential new partner um, that does uh, margin and different things uh, out of Hong Kong uh, that where we're looking to see if we can integrate Dash and we're exploring uh, what we need to do. Uh, so that was really late at night because they're in Hong Kong. Um, I also uh, met with uh, an Indian uh, exchange. A potential partner we're looking into. Um, I also had long conversations with Charlie Schrem about the projects we're working on and what he's going to be doing for Dash next. Uh, so Charlie's probably going to be doing a tour in Europe uh, representing Dash on different conferences and meetups. So that's an exclusive for you right now. Hey, hey. hello, everybody. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so I, I spent a lot of time with him yesterday. And um, yeah, that I also met internally with the team on different projects we're working on, follow up with Matthew that works with me. We have a little side project in which we're creating like user guides on how to buy Dash because we feel like one that's one of our biggest pain points. So that's something uh, Matt is doing. You know, Our job is to reduce friction in every interaction with the Dash network. That's not a way to see it. So that's reducing friction for users in acquiring Dash and selling Dash. That's reducing friction for businesses and facilitating, you know, their uh, integration with us. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I also uh, met with uh, Karen Sue from Block Cipher. She's the head of growth and the uh, the person we work with on Block Cipher. We meet with her several times a week and have, uh, you know, we have a joint target list of businesses we're trying to um, convert to use Dash. And, you know, the partnership is really, really going well. Wow. And that's what I'm, I'm very excited about. That does sound I'm, like it was a busy day. <laughs> yeah, and that's just really a, a typical day for us, especially now, right? Um, you know, you have to, we dealt with a lot of rejection and that's something you learn in sales very early on. You need to be able to manage rejection um, you know, so let's say leads that are now turning into opportunities are leads that we've been trying to work, you know, since 2014. Wow. Um, and obviously as the business community is more aware of Dash and what we're doing as we are showing staying power, as we're showing that we're committed to our, and to our roadmap, um, this relationships, you know, strengthen. And they blossom into something, right? So it takes a lot of time. Um, you know, there's a very long sale, sales cycle that's attached to what we do. So I think that's one of the things that we needed to adjust with their community, their expectation in terms of timelines. Uh, because this, you know, if you're like in the real estate development business and you're, you know, building this skyscraper and people get upset because you don't have it ready in one year, it's because there's a problem there in communication as you cannot build skyscraper in one year. So that's kind of like what we do. We, you know, it's a long sales cycle. Relationships need to be built and trust needs to be generated. And eventually, you know, that blossoms into an actual integration. Mm -hmm. So I think right now everyone understands that better. Mm -hmm. And since we started seeding all these relationships early last year, let's say, um, you know, and now they are reaching a stage where they're ready, you know, for, for the public. I think this year um, it's going to become very clear everything that we've been doing and how it's resulting mm -hmm. in, in, in this new, more vibrant ecosystem for Dash. Well, that leads very nicely into my final question, uh, which is, 
where do you see Dash, or maybe to be more specific to you, uh, how what type of businesses do you see integrating with Dash in what way in five to ten years? Right. Um, so, you know, I think that um, I'll divide my answer into. Um, I think that for in the near term, let's say in the next year and you know year and a half, we, we still have a lot of, of market share to win within the blockchain space. And we're filling every hole we identify in our ecosystem, right? So we, we do some planning and we identify where we need um, better uh, services. So whether we need better payment processors, um, you know, larger regulated markets and things like that. So over the next year, I feel we're very much going to be in that stage where we're integrated uh, with all those businesses and Dash is going to become really, really easy uh, to interact with. And that's just going to result in, um, you know, a number of services just coming up for Dash. That's what's going to happen in the near term. In five to 10 years, I think it, Dash is going to be a globally recognized brand. I think that um, businesses of all sizes are going to be interfacing and integrating with Dash. And, but most importantly, I think Dash is going to realize its, its vision of giving people an alternative to the legacy financial system that they can rely on to realize true wealth. And that's what's really important. Um, you know, the fact that Dash is self-sustainable means that we can stick to our goals. And what I want to see more than what specific businesses are integrating with Dash is I want to see Dash become a powerhouse and really provide uh, people with the alternative to opt out of uh, traditional financial services and into something that, you know, they really control and is conducive to them realizing true wealth. So that's the vision I want to see happen. Well, there you have it, everybody, from Daniel Diaz. Daniel, before I let you go, do you have a, do you have a Twitter or anything? Or at least tell us your online handle where anybody can perhaps reach out to you if they'd like. Well, yeah, I'm not on Twitter. I'm not really, you know, a social media guy. That's all right. Um, that's I, all right. Yeah, you can reach me at daniel at dash.org. And, you know, I, I try to respond. Um, you know, there's been a lot of uh, inquiries coming recently. So we are uh, trying to keep up. But yeah, I'm not hard to find. I'm Minotaur in the forums. So you can also reach me um, to our uh, cryptocurrency forums too. Wonderful. All right. Thanks for your time, Daniel. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye now. Thank you.